So in this video I've come up to the North Norfolk coast for a couple of days to go to three different bird reserves. At the moment I'm at RSPB Titchwell, this morning I went to RSPB Snettersham and tomorrow I'm going to Cly. The hide which I'm in at the moment is the island hide at Titchwell and you get great access here. This morning I had something like about 15 avocets well within reach for photography so it gave me lots of opportunity for just static sort of portrait shots of them in the water but also to do some action pictures because there were pairs that were squabbling and fighting and also gave me the opportunity to do some flight shots as they're flying in from the islands towards this hide here. So the reason I'm up here is the RSPB Nature Group had a weekend meet up here. So the group of about 15 of us met up and we went to Snettersham this morning. I'll show you the pictures taken there. Then came on to Titchwell and tomorrow, as I say, we're going to Cly. The birds that I've actually photographed here this weekend, I'm amazed at the number of birds that are different birds that I've photographed. I've photographed avocets, Godwits, Curlew, Ruff, Ring Plover, Oyster Catchers and it's really been a very very productive weekend. So although I've been photographing from this hide here I'm using the 150 to 400 with the OM1 and all the still pictures are taken handheld. So that's a great because it's about a one kilometer walk from the actual RSBB sort of center there actually to the beach and often as not some of the best pictures will be actually on the beach. Now as the tide goes on out it will expose areas where the birds will actually come and feed on on mussels and, and things like that lugworms coming in there and you just stalk them you do obviously need a long lens but hopefully I've got some good shots today and I'll show you those stills in a minute. So here I'm going to show a few stills and video clips taken at both Titchwell and Snettersham. This rough was initially photographed near the reed beds and it stayed there for quite some time. Eventually it came out into the open and this enabled me to get a shot of it with its reflection in the blue of the water. This ring plover tended to stay near the edge of the reed beds, although it would occasionally come down to the edge of the water as in this shot. So one of the big advantages of the island hide at Titchwill is that birds do come close enough to attain frame filling images. Getting shots of avocets was quite easy and you'd often find pairs chasing one another which gave some interesting images. As the openings to the hide are quite wide and you do not have glass in them, this makes photography a lot easier. This is particularly important when photographing birds in flight, as can be seen with these two shots of shell duck. This shot of black tail godwit was again taken from the island hide. Sometimes birds will fly towards the hide from the small island in the middle. If you spot them taking off, you can pick them up in the viewfinder and with bird tracking on the OM1, you'll get a whole sequence of shots as the bird flies towards you. Although the island hide is reasonably close to the visitor centre, the walk out to the shoreline is about 1 km. Whilst walking towards the shoreline I did come across this very confiding linnet that was collecting grasses and other nesting material. So I've walked out onto the beach and although I'm still a bit of a way off the shoreline, you can see how as the tide has gone out it exposes all these mudflats, lagoons and areas where oyster catchers, godwits, curlews are going to be feeding. So approaching them 
needs a little bit of caution. Obviously, if you've got a big long telephoto, it's a lot easier. But just slowly approach them, taking a few pictures, and don't rush it. And it's quite surprising how much they will actually allow you to, how close they'll allow you to get. Often as not, what will happen is that as you get that little bit closer, they will actually take off. And that gives you the chance using a long lens to actually get some nice flight shots as they're all taking off. But today's been fairly productive. Came down this afternoon. Tide was in a little bit more now, it's fully out. And I got some quite good sort of results, I think. So I'll show you some of those pictures now. So these are a few of the shots of some of the waders on the shoreline. You must wait until the tide has gone well out before areas where the rocks and pools are exposed. Once the tide has receded, the waders will fly in and start to feed. As already mentioned, it's best to use a slow approach until you can get within range to start taking pictures. So take a few pictures, move a little closer, and then take a few more pictures. After a while, and with a careful approach, you can get well within range for photography. Eventually, you will get to a distance where the birds decide enough is enough and they will take flight. Providing that you have a fast enough shutter speed with quick reactions, you should be able to get some pleasing flight shots as with this group of godwits in flight. You will often see birds as they fly from one area of the shoreline to another and if you can pick them up as they're flying in and pan with the bird, you can get a whole sequence of shots as the birds fly in. One image I really wanted to get was a decent shot of Curlew in flight. The fact that this one was calling as it flew made this image my favourite of the weekend. I hope you enjoyed the video. The follow on video, part two, I'll be showing shots I've taken at Clyde. I'll show shots of spoonbills and egrets, explaining which hides I found best for photography. Thanks for watching.